The Auburn Tigers will continue to make a statement on Saturday. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. And thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining me this Friday as we're dapping it up with Daryl Dapridge, Montgomery radio legend in Daryl, there's there's kind of been a mix of folks, and I understand both sides of the Auburn fan base say this. What? Oh, it's New Mexico State. Yeah, Auburn should take care of business. Or, oh, it's New Mexico State. You know, this is a team that's already won eight games this season. Regardless of how Saturday goes, Auburn has the chance to do something it hasn't done since 2019. That's win four games in a row. And I don't care who it's against. I don't care what they look like. It's something that's important as far as putting together and building momentum for the future of this Auburn football program. They're going to probably get that done on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, you only good teams beat the teams that are put in front of them that they're supposed to, and they don't and they don't struggle with it. I mean, that's that's the really the litmus test or, or kind of what how you would judge this is if Auburn's able to to put this game away fairly early and play a lot of people. I mean, you can't. You're supposed to have games like this when you play the gauntlet of a schedule that is the SEC, and you're supposed to win big in these games. You struggle against in a game like this, like Auburn did a couple years ago in Georgia State or the infamous Jacksonville State game with Jeremy Johnson. Then it's cause for concern. Otherwise, you don't you don't you know mock a team or or, or get on a team for doing what they're supposed to do and boat racing an opponent like this. And I don't want to hear. New Mexico State's a good football team. They've won eight games. They're bowl eligible. They're, they're, they're in the Conference USA title game. Dig deeper. Drill. Pretend you're on an oil rig and drill down deeper. They have not even played a Power 5 school yet. They've lost to Liberty, Hawaii, and UMass. Not The, the teams that they've beaten are mid. They, they're one of their best wins was last week against Western, Western Kentucky, Kentucky. Yeah. and Western Kentucky was five and four coming into that game. So I'm not trying to not. I'm just saying they're not at the level. If Auburn struggles with a team like New Mexico State and does what some of these pundits are predicting or afraid of, then Auburn's got bigger problems that we need to worry about than the Aggies of New Mexico State. Yeah, I mean maybe, but also mm-hmm. if people are talking up New Mexico State and saying they're this great football team, which I think their offense is pretty good. I think their defense is pretty bad. And I think Auburn's offense is going to look really good against them on Saturday. I think the defense may give up some chunk plays. We'll see. It doesn't seem like their starting quarterback is going to play, and he's been a big part, a big part of what they've done offensively and why they've won eight games already this season. But if Auburn does, let's say they win by 10, 13, 17 points, they don't cover the spread. Daryl. Then I don't want to hear the people that were talking up New Mexico State saying, oh my gosh, they can't blow out New Mexico State. And it's like, well, hold on, hold on. And also, I think the other side of the coin is it doesn't really matter because the Iron Bowl's next week. And there's probably some looking ahead if that were to happen. I don't think this team is, Daryl. I think this team's going to take care of business <laughs> on Saturday. But I've just grown tired of hearing this. All summer, we talked about how tricky this Cal game was. And Auburn barely beats them, but they win. And it's like, oh my gosh, but it's Cal. Then they do the same thing against Mississippi State. People are like, well, watch out for Mississippi State. They beat Mississippi State. Oh, well, it's just Mississippi State. Oh, watch out for Vandy. Auburn beats Vandy, takes care of business on the road. And it's like, well, it was just Vandy. Watch out for Arkansas. They beat Florida. You're going on the road again. Auburn blitzes Arkansas. Okay, well, it was just Arkansas. You're doing it against all these weak teams. It's like, stop it. Stop doing that. It doesn't make any sense. You're not getting anything out of this. Like, just beat the teams that are on your schedule that you're supposed to beat, and everything else will take care of itself. I think you can compartmentalize the schedule with how you laid it out. I think you look at any team that's an SEC opponent on the road. I don't care if it's Vanderbilt or Arkansas. And yeah. the Mississippi State, who traditionally the last two years has beaten you, Right. You, you just you throw that out and don't care how you win the game. You win the game in the SEC, and Auburn has won all three of those impressively. Cal was Cal. Late night game, West Coast. We saw that coming a mile away. 
Totally. Here's the thing about New Mexico State. I agree with you in theory that if Auburn wins this game 17, wins by 17, people shouldn't be up in arms. But it, it's, it depends on how they, that 17-point victory looks. Okay. If Auburn well, struggles that. through three quarters and goes into the fourth quarter up seven and then you know scores a touchdown and a f- field goal, that's different than Auburn being up 24, emptying the bench, and in the fourth quarter New Mexico State scores an oh-by-the-way touchdown. Different. The perception and how it plays out is going to look differently. That being said, me and you did a show the Friday before the season started in August. And you said, all right, Daryl, tell me a game that you're going to watch this weekend with vested interest. And I chose New Mexico State and UMass because I knew Auburn was going to play both opponents. Sure. I watched every snap. And I came away fairly impressed with New Mexico State's offense against a group of five Swiss cheese defense that's with, that was UMass. Let's see what they do with S, the SEC defense who's rounding into and taping in a, taking in a form, shaping into form to be a really salty, good defense. Let's see what happens then with or without their quarterback. Yeah, I – so I watched that game too, and, I mean, that was a lifetime ago. Right? I mean, we, that was a week zero game. And so, right. I mean, the, the, those teams playing then and those teams now are two totally different teams. I think if UMass and New Mexico State played now, I imagine New Mexico State would win that game. I, just imagine, but I remember watching that game. It's like, both these teams stink. These oh, teams, yeah. These teams aren't that good. Um, I like Tyson Pumachon in that game. I remember him standing out to me to some extent. It's like, okay, if Auburn can like, contain him, and they did after that first drive. Um, so I, I'm just not really sold on this New Mexico State team. And, and some of that has to do with, I mean, th- this defense is preparing for their backup quarterback. Like, let's just be very clear on that. I, I don't think Auburn is expecting the starting quarterback for New Mexico State to play. I, I just, I, I don't see that happening. He could, and if he does, I think it's going to impact <clears throat> what Auburn does defensively because he's so mobile. Um, Talked to a few guys. It sounds like in meetings they're comparing him to Johnny Manziel as far as his on-the-fly ability, which... You know, once again, the injury matters. The injury yeah. matters because his greatest asset is his dual threat ability. And the, oh. in, the injury is a hamstring and that he pulled and, and really tugged and, and only played the rest of that game. Some of their beat writers and coach went on record saying because to win that game, put them in the title game of their conference or else he probably wouldn't have. He gutted it out just to get to the conference championship. You got to figure a game against a power five when that ticket's already been punched and you need him healthy at Liberty that he with a bad hamstring and his mobility, one of his greatest assets against that Auburn defense is going to limit him. I I can't imagine that he plays because his effectiveness goes right out the window. I'm with you. I'm with you. This Auburn defense has a lot of respect for their offensive line. I do think that's a factor. And so we'll certainly see how that matchup stands. It's going to be very, very important, obviously. But to me, Daryl, and we'll talk about this in just a second here on Locked on Auburn. To me, it's all about how Auburn's offense looks. And we'll discuss that more in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers, which I love. You don't have to worry about all these sharks and, and betting pros. You just pick more or less on two to six player stat projections, and you can watch the winnings roll in. They've got it for Auburn football. They've got it for Auburn basketball. They've got it for every sport you could possibly imagine. Golf, they've got some esports things on there. A ton of different things uh, to check out and uh, collect your winnings in different ways. So they've got quick withdrawals. It's easy gameplay. You can put your um, your your nightly team together and like, 60 seconds if you really, really wanted to. So be sure to check out our friends at prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Download the prize picks app. Use code locked on college is a great app. Very, very easy to use. Prize picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends at Eddie's Calzones. Eddie's is located at 130 North College Street in downtown Auburn. It's across from the new Target. There's nothing like Eddie's. They've got great specialty calzones. 
They've got delicious, crispy buffalo wings. They've got a, a ton of great sides as well. And cannot stress this enough, the coldest beer in town. If you don't believe me, go try it. You will then understand that I am correct. They've got a bunch of weekly specials, like two-for-one calzones on Tuesdays, half-price wings on Wednesdays, beer specials Sunday through Thursday. Got $2 domestic, $3 imported on craft beer from 3 to 9 every day. So check it out. Also, Eddie's can deliver. They're open late till 3 a.m., excuse me, 4 a.m., so be sure to check out our friends at Eddie's. They'll deliver that late as well. You can find Eddie's on the web at eddiescalzonesauburn.com or give them a call 334-329-5111 and keep up with their specials on Instagram. Just search Eddie's Calzones Auburn. Daryl Daprich, our guest on this Friday, game day eve. And just real quick, if you were listening, I want basketball content. Daryl and I recorded a show already. It's up on this feed. It's up on the YouTube channel. Um, Auburn and Notre Dame is up there. And we'll go live tonight after Auburn plays whoever they are slated to play this evening. And we'll also go live. Nope, we won't go live. But Sunday morning, we'll have another show recapping Auburn and New Mexico State. That's it. I feel like we're doing a bunch of shows the next few days. Did I get them all? Is that it? We really are. My gosh, we're knocking it out. People are going to get tired. They're going to put like a, a thing, like an emoji over my face to watch it on YouTube. So, yeah, just maybe, maybe that's wildly. why the podcast numbers keep going up. Maybe everybody's just going to audio only. Who knows? <laughs> I hear you. Daryl, I think what the offense does on Saturday is going to be huge because I don't think this is really about the opponent of New Mexico State. I think a lot of what's going to happen offensively on Saturday is about timing and Peyton Thorne and these pass catchers and the running backs that are involved with the RPO. I think you're going to see the timing and everything just look a little more comfortable, a little more smooth. I mean, the fact that we haven't really seen Auburn since they've been on this tear um, at home in a hot minute, I, I think it's going to speak dividends. I, I really do. And I think this game's over really, really quick because Peyton Thorne leads this offense on two or three touchdown drives to start the game. I, I think that's how this is going to go. Yeah, there's two schools of thought on how you can – I've actually heard people talk about how Auburn can pick a number on how many rushing yards they want to have. That sure. if they just ground it, go on the ground and ground it out, that they can absolutely go for 350 on the ground and control – and just completely manhandle them. But if I'm Auburn, I don't want to fool around and play with my food, but I want to use this as an opportunity to get in the lab a little bit, Right. Yeah, run the football, do what you do well. But Auburn has come leaps and bounds the last two or three weeks with the balance of their offense. And I would look for a game like this to expound on that, to amplify that, and continue to work on that. If you just go out there and go basic and go conservative and say, I can run the ball 70% of the time and absolutely blow them out, I get it. But I want to see them working on stuff. Like I said, getting in the lab a little bit, working on some things, give Alabama some things to look at, put it on tape. So continue to show the growth process that you've showed the last three weeks and build upon that. Put some new routes in, put some new, you know, schemes, some plays in there that are different, you know, the route tree, that kind of thing. I think just to kind of sharpen your knives a little bit, sharpen your tool belt to get ready for uh, the following week. I think I'm on the other side of this. And normally, normally I would say that, but the Iron Bowl's next week. I think you should be as vanilla as possible. Get up a bunch and get your starters out of there. Uh, I don't want to see Jarquez in the second half. I wouldn't mind, you know, not seeing Rivaldo Fairweather, the entire offensive line in the second half. Like, I, I just, I think it can be that kind of game. I really do. Don't just. I agree with that. I agree with that. I 100% don't dispute that I'd like to get up big. I just think that maybe the method to the madness might be a little bit different. You want to go vanilla. I want to work on some things. But the ends yeah. justifying the means in both scenarios, get up four scores and get everybody out of the freaking game. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Let us see Robbie. Let us see Holden. Let us see some of these young offensive linemen that may have yes. to play a lot next year. That Jeremiah may Cobb. Play. Let's see Cobb. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jarquez Hunter is at 745. Rushing yards, we got to get him to 1,000. I think he gets very close. I think he gets very close. I think he has a big first half. But you're saying Jeremiah Cobb could have a huge second half. 
I think that Jeremiah Cobb, if the game is in hand, let's say midway through the third quarter or late third quarter, and he can get seven to ten touches, he could have a couple of big runs, catch some balls out of the backfield, and have what I would consider to be a career day for him. Sure. Yeah. So, We've nailed the last two weeks, so maybe we keep yeah. that keep that going. I'll go with I'll go with a receiver. I'll go with Javarius Johnson. I think Javarius Johnson has a big day. He's team. hitting his stride. He is hitting his stride. You can tell he's finally healthy. Yes. Right? You could tell yeah. that. So, yeah. um, and then Jason and uh, Jason Jones joins the show next segment. He talks about a few guys. He highlights Austin Keys. So maybe we get a good day out of Austin Keys. We've certainly seen that. So in the game against Arkansas, Daryl, Auburn played 29 players on defense and 31 players on offense. 60. Quick math. 60. Do you think Auburn plays more than 60 players tomorrow? Yes, I go over. Do you want me right. to get an exact number? Sure. I'm going to go with one of my favorite hockey players number, Mario Lemieux, 66. Okay. First time that will ever be referenced on a locked on Auburn, but there you yeah, go. Yeah, that's probably true. I'll go yeah. with 69. 69 players play. Okay. Be nice. All right. Yeah. Uh, final score prediction. I'm going 35, 10. Wow. Okay. 38, 14. Okay. All right. We're pretty close then. You said, wow. And then you didn't say anything that much different. I said, wow, because when you said the number, it was kind of close to what I thought offensively. Okay. Yeah. Got it. All right. Yeah. Got it. 38, 14. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. Coming up, Jason Jones talks about the improvements to the pass rush, who stepped up at linebacker and several other things. One of our better conversations with Jason. We've had a few good ones, so be sure to stick around for that. Daryl, in the meantime, how can people check out everything you've got going on? Follow me on uh, Twitter, DAP6410 or X. Monday mornings with Ben Taylor, Tuesday afternoons with Jacob Goins on the Auburn Network, and then like the next three or four days. Sorry, folks. I'm apologizing in advance. You're going to see a lot of me. <laughs> That's right. That's right. No need to apologize for that. All right. Jason Jones coming up next right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Athletic Brewing. Athletic Brewing brings you the game changer of the week, and we will rock and roll with, let's see, we did Jarquez Hunter earlier, so we will go with Rivaldo Fairweather. And much like Rivaldo, Fairweather changes the game. Athletic Brewing Company, they have completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually Tastes good. Rivaldo has changed Auburn's offense. He's got a chance to break several tight end records, both in Auburn history and single season. All that's coming up on the horizon for Rivaldo, I think. Athletic Brewing Company, their brews are great tasting and award winning. They blow out full strength beers in global competitions. They've got over 50 style of craft and non-alcoholic beers including IPAs, Golden, Sours, and more. I've had a few. They're all very, very good. They're fit for all times. You'll love them. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy them online, athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use code LOCKEDON to get 15% off your order. That's code LOCKEDON at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company fit for all times. Today's show also brought to you by Auburn Med Aesthetic. Guys, we've been there. It's the day of or the day before an anniversary, and you need the perfect gift. Well, our friends at AuburnMedAesthetics.com, they've got you covered. They've also got a physical location. I'm going by there next week to go ahead and stock up, get ahead of the game regarding Christmas gifts for some of the ladies in my life. I recommend you do the same. The gift card, it's easy. It's easy. Let them decide what they want to do. But seriously, you, they're going to love meeting with Dr. Nancy Herring and her master esthetician, Circe Kelly. They've got a ton of experience in this business, and it's just the perfect gift. At Auburn Metastetics, you get personalized, private, and relaxed appointments to create that perfect spa environment. Go to Auburn Metastetics, the full-service med spa serving Auburn, Opelika, and Lee County. Gift card purchases are available at auburnmetastetics.com. You can stop by and see them at East Glen Avenue across from Chappie's. Remember, Auburn Metastetics is perfect for last-minute gift cards. Guys, we promise she will love it. Joining us now here on Locked on Auburn, Auburn defensive lineman Jason Jones. 
Jason, we were kind of laughing, um, me and so, some buddies, because New Mexico State, when you start the season, it's like, oh, it's just New Mexico State. But this team's actually pretty decent. They're pretty solid. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you right now, like, the offensive line, like, it, they play hard. They play really they, – they block you from the beginning to the end of the play. They're, in my opinion, they're better than some SEC offensive linemen. Wow. The quarterback is like Johnny Manziel when I mean that. Yeah, I seriously mean that. And the running back is better than some SEC backs, so they're no pushover. So as far as preparation, right, because this is a big thing that's popped up, a big talking point throughout the week. Auburn folks are saying you can't look ahead to Alabama. You can't look ahead to the Iron Bowl. You've got to focus on New Mexico State. It sounds like you guys are doing that. Yeah, I mean, like, we can't. And, I, I, I mean, I hate to bring this up on an Auburn show, but I remember back in 2007 when – um, when Alabama played uh, Lafayette, they lost right. a lot because, I mean, they thought it was an easy game. But, like, here's the thing, though, and I tell everybody every single week, like, it doesn't matter who you, who you go against. It doesn't matter who because anybody can lose nowadays. Anybody, everybody can lose. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So as far as looking at this offense, though, I mean, you guys know that you're going to have your hands full on Saturday. I'm sure that makes that task a little bit easier but i mean the front seven jason the defensive line the linebackers over this winning streak that you guys are in over these last three weeks you guys are playing y'all's best ball of the season what do you yeah. guys attribute that to i think the the one thing that we're doing the best is just rushing as one we were trying to at the beginning we were more so individuals and we were kind of like mm. i feel like pride took over a lot of us and then we really i think the UMass game kind of woke us up, got us going a little bit, but then after the LSU loss, it was like, like, let's go. Like we're we lost four in a row. Like, come on. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. Let's, no more. Yeah. And different guys have stepped up in different games as far as the pass rushing standpoint. Uh McLeod was exceptional last week. You got the best pass rushing score in the country a few weeks ago. Marcus has had several games where he stepped up. It, that's got to be encouraging if you're a member of this defensive line group that different guys are able and capable of stepping up week in and week out. Yeah, and I believe that like it shows you like how good we can be as a defense. I mean, Auburn, I know when growing, me growing up that Auburn was known for their defense. And just like knowing that and seeing that, it, it encourages a lot of people. Like, I know, like, I told you in the past, like, I watch a lot of people on, especially our team, especially Marcus, and the way that he goes on in games and the way that he practices and, and the way that he and, and that, that he is in games is just, like, I see why he's a top player. Same with Jalen. I mean, like, if you if you watch him at practice, he's his motor is high all the time. And there's a reason why he had that stat line. It was, like, nine tackles, four TFL, three sacks. There, there's a reason why he had that stat line. There's a reason why – he did so well last week. It's because of practice. Is he finally getting healthy, Jason, or is he just kind of figuring it out uh, how to operate in this Ron Roberts defense? No, I, I feel like he's he's good. I feel, I feel like he's good. Like he, I feel like he's healthy. He's doing good. Um, I know it's extremely hard having an ankle injury at the beginning of the season. Yeah, having to come back like second, third game, and then having to go. So. I think – and the thing is, Jalen's always been a great pass rusher. Jalen's always been a great player with a high motor. Um, and I just think that these last few games has really been showing. Sure. Jason, I was kind of thinking about this earlier when I was kind of writing down what I wanted to ask you. And this has been the third, maybe the fourth time this season where you guys have to prepare, I would assume, for multiple quarterbacks because their injury status – is up in the air. Happened with Cal, happened with Mississippi State. I think it happened with Vandy, and that and now it's happening this week. The you know the their quarterback, their starting quarterback is um, we don't know if he's going to play or not. Yeah. Is that is that normal or is that just kind of how the chips have fallen for you guys this year? It's just how it's been. I mean, you never know what's going to happen in college football. So I know this week we're, we're preparing for both, just as it is. Sure. Like, for Vandy like we did for uh Cal so I mean we got to prepare the same way as always like just because one person's down or like one person isn't going or whatever it doesn't mean that we prepare differently I mean we still prepare the same way mm -hmm. 
Do you, do the players in the locker room feel the momentum that's growing with this program? I mean, what this staff is doing on the recruiting front is pretty pretty remarkable. And there's a lot of smoke around a bunch of high quality guys that could be coming in in the future. Uh, do you guys feel that in combination, I guess, with this winning streak that's going on and with the success that NIL is having? Do you guys feel that within the locker room? Um, I mean, it's always it's always cool to win. It's always fun to win. I mean, no one likes losing. So sure. I, I guess, like, like I said, like we really found ourselves these last few games and and we're playing as one team instead of like I think I think last week was the first time offensive line and defensive line played it like at their best as a unit. Sure. Throughout the game. I mean, I remember looking up at the at the scoreboard when when they were on the offense on the field, we we're getting five, five, ten yards every carry. And then we're out there getting three and outs every every down. So I mean, um, so it's it's cool. And plus, I also seeing the coaches on the recruiting trail. That's also encouraging too. I mean, coach wants the best recruits in here to help us win. They and and coach wants to win now, not later. So and 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 he expresses that. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. No. No question. No question I'll, about it. And your position, coach. I mean, Coach Garrett. I mean, he's he's been. Hard on the trail, bringing in guys. So no, no question, uh, no question about that. Jason, the the linebacker room, I think you can make the case is the most improved room on this team from the start of the season. The way they've played down the stretch and throughout this winning streak, who's impressed you as far as the guys that are playing behind you at that linebacker spot? I think the obvious answer is Eugene, but I'm gonna give you somebody else. I'm gonna say Austin Keys. Love it. Uh, I mean, he's he's. Ever since he came back from the, that wrist injury, I mean, he's been playing lights out, uh, like in high motor, and like he's not afraid to hit nothing. So, like, um, uh, one other person, too, I guess, like, so Eugene, uh, Austin Keys, and Larry Nixon, again, I like, I've, I've all been amazing players, and they've grown so much from the beginning of the season to now, just, just playing faster and stuff like that, which I'm, I'm extremely excited for uh, the three of them. Yeah, yeah, and then I, I'm going to put another name out there. Cam Riley, when they blitz him, I mean, he gets oh, home. He's been so effective bad. at rushing the passer down the stretch. Yeah, my bad. I forgot about the freak. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, my bad. I was I was thinking I was thinking about like who. Yeah, no, Cam. Cam has how many sacks he have this season? Like three or four? I don't know, man. But it's like every three times he rushes, he's impacting the play. I mean, it's oh, yeah. it, it's he's doing a great job at rushing the passer. It's almost like every time he rushes, he's back there. So, I mean, shoot, I put him on the blitz every down. No you know? question. No question. We've if made I'm, that uh, We've made that joke on the show. No question if, about it. If it's my decision, I'm putting him at – I might put him at Jack some downs. You know yeah, I mean? that, was, but, that, was, uh, that was a big topic in the offseason before they added um, Steven Sings and, and uh, McLeod. They're like, could, could Cam Riley play Jack? And I don't know. I, I think he could. I think he I, could do it. I feel like he really could. I feel, I feel like he'll, he'll do good. There, so like it would it'd be cool to have him at oh inside linebacker and outside linebacker, just like a hybrid player. That'd be really cool. I know you're you're not looking ahead to the Iron Bowl, but um, you got to think about it a little bit. I mean, a Alabama's is a, a team that you've you know that recruited you heavily, and then and then obviously you know you're you're back here and you you grew up in this state. You know what the Iron Bowl means. Um, do. Do, do you think most folks on this roster with, with so many new faces, with so many transfers from all throughout the country, do you think this team do you think this team fully gets what the Iron Bowl is? Um I believe so. Because I mean I, they they saw the rivalry between LSU and us. Sure. They saw the rivalry between Ole Miss and us. They saw the rivalry versus Mississippi State and us. So they they're starting to realize like this is this is real and me growing up in alabama we didn't have no nfl team alabama right. auburn were the nfl teams you know what i mean so um i think i think they understand i, I really do think they understand and like it's going to be a dog fight and that's how every iron bowl is because every, both teams have great players you're gonna have to go out there and you know and bust your asses that's just how it is yeah no question. Jason, best of luck this week. I'd love to get you on next week before the Iron Bowl to preview that one. And uh, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll talk again soon. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much to Daryl Daprich. Thank you so much to Jason Jones. And just a quick reminder, head over to the, the episode that's more recent than this, and you will see 
live reaction of me and Daryl reacting to Auburn's game against Notre Dame from Thursday night. And join us live Friday night. And we'll, of course, podcast that as well for Auburn basketball. And then, of course, we'll be back Sunday morning to recap Auburn and New Mexico State. Until then, check out all of our written work at auburndaily.com. We will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.